Brady to throw, throws a deep pass downfield. Got Scotty Miller in the open, makes the catch! Touchdown Tampa Bay! Scotty Scooter Miller, and Brady puts it right on the spot. Snap to Rodgers, looking right, lost it down the right side, and he's got his man! Gone for the touchdown, MVS! Orquez left puts it into the air. Hartman standing at his 11-yard line, drops it, muffs it, loose ball. Looks like it's recovered by yeah. Buffalo, and he goes into the end zone. Tywan Jones comes up with it at the two-yard line. They give it off inside, handoff goes to Darrell Williams, trucks the defender, diving touchdown! Kansas City, like an 18-wheeler, busting through a bunch of hay bales. It is Darrell Williams on a six-yard touchdown run, and the Chiefs have their first lead of the game. The sound. Of Championship Sunday. Welcome to another edition of the Around the NFL podcast. My name is Dan Hans. I come to you from a virtual room filled with some heroes. Mark Sessler, Greg Rosenthal. Boys, we have a Super Bowl and it involves Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. What could you really complain about, honestly? I mean, Mark could find some things, I'm sure, right? I I am not. I am. I think this is a <laughs> marvelous matchup, and it's pretty stunning that this is where we are. Um, when we started all of this back in March, and Brady signed with the Bucks. I mean, this could have gone one of a million different directions. I'm not surprised by Mahomes, but this is an incredible sports story. I th- I think as we get older, it's like you feel. Even when we're not particularly invested, you know, these aren't our teams. You feel worse for the teams that lose. Like I was rooting for the Bucks today, and yet that Packers game seems haunting to me because we've all just loved watching Aaron Rodgers over the years. And I know we're going to get into it, but in the Bills too, you know, I'm sure a, a lot of people kind of went on that ride and and you feel it more. That's just like, okay, yeah, the Super Bowl stories are great, but these two stories that just ended today, you feel for them. I felt a little cheated um, by – Especially the first game today. That fe- we were overdue a classic, you know, of the playoffs. And that was all set up. And and Matt LaFleur, I don't want to pile on, but it's your fault. You took that classic from us. And then when the second game went sideways and we realized that was our last chance before the Super Bowl to have a classic. Oh, bearded boy. Oh, bearded boy. We're going to get into Bucks it. It was pretty close. I know we're going to get into it, but it was pretty close to a classic. It was a great game. It just, you know, as you said, didn't quite stick the landing of like a classic. That You're right. Not, yeah. that, that was not a classic by any by it, anyone's estimation, right? It had a shot. It, was, it had a shot. And then it, it, did not, it did not happen. It was incredibly compelling for 57 minutes of game action. Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. So I, I'm just saying I'm not gonna come. I'm not gonna complain about that one. All right. Well, I will, and that and that's that's where we're. That's how we're different. We're all different. That's what makes the f- podcast fun. We're gonna get into both <laughs> games played today. We'll uh, talk a little bit, of course, about what comes next. Um, let's start with yes, the first game, and it went down at Lambeau Field, and uh, man, Tom Brady did it again. Here's the snap and an end around to Godwin. Godwin running to the third. He's got the first down across the 40. Bucks are going to win this football game. Tampa Bay Buccaneers with a reverse play. Who would have guessed? Byron Lefwich and Bruce Arians dial up the right play. Godwin, our leading receiver, he romps for the first down. And the Buccaneers have a fresh set with 27 seconds left. Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be the first team ever to host a Super Bowl. The Bucs have punched their ticket to Super Bowl 55. Gene Deckerhoff, WFUS, with the call. Yes, that end around sealed it for the Bucs. Uh, the big gain to run out the clock of a 31-26 win for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers over the Green Bay Packers in the NFC Championship game. The Bucks advanced to their first Super Bowl since way back in the 2002 season when Tony Dungy and Brad Johnson and Warren Sapp roamed the gridiron. Now John Gruden. And Tony Dungy wishes he was going there. Excuse me, John Gruden, you're right. It was a long time ago, as I said. Uh, but this time it was a Bucks team led by Tom Brady. And, uh, Greg, Tom Brady wasn't perfect in this game. 
He uh, threw three touchdown passes, threw for 280 yards, but he also threw three interceptions and gave Green Bay every chance uh, to get back into this game uh, when it seemed like it was going to be a blowout at a certain point. Uh, but at the end of the day, the Tampa Bay defense uh, stiffened up, and when Tom Brady was given the chance to seal the game, and that is a big talking point, obviously, why did he get this opportunity in Matt LaFleur's decision-making? Brady and the Bucks offense closed it out, and now they're going to the Super Bowl. I know a very Jameis Winston line there in the box score, like 283 and three right. you know, with like 31 points. But um, I think it goes to show every part of the Bucks contributed in this game. Godwin, who I've long thought is one of the most underrated players, not has been not been his best year. Man, he showed up today. He might have been their MVP. So many big plays. The defensive line, you know, Barrett um, and, and Vita Vea and Jason Pierre Paul were such difference maker. Whitehead forces a couple, you know, fumbles. And you said it like we take it for granted that Brady was throwing there when they got the pass interference call uh, against the Bucks. That pre- I mean, against the Packers, that pretty much put the game away. But that kind of went with the rest of the game. Like Bruce Arians was going for it. He was not going to run the ball in that situation. I don't think he would have kicked field goals in the same situation that Matt LaFleur did. And he's going for it on fourth and three to end the first half with 13 seconds to go. That was one of the biggest plays of the game. They kept the ball and then they hit a touchdown the next play. Uh, The fortune favors the bold. And, uh, you know, LaFleur... And the Packers, they I think they had the better quarterback today, but they they did not have the better team. Right. And it's, you know, the field goal is because of the, the nature of football, um, it was massively pivotal to decide to kick that field goal with two and a few seconds, two minutes and a few seconds left. And I, I guess to me, I, I'm just stunned by the more global decision to put the ball in the hands of Tom Brady because you're saying you somewhat trust the idea that Mike Pettin's defense is going to slow this Bucks team down versus going for it with Aaron Rodgers, one of the best quarterbacks we've ever witnessed in our life. I mean, you know, the, it's not just those mistakes, though, because I thought that the, the sequence before halftime where you get the Sean Murphy bunting interception of Aaron Rodgers that turned into the 39-yard Scotty Miller touchdown, where afterwards, I mean, LaFleur, who's while is answering questions about his own issues, um, basically called out Mike Pettin and said it was man coverage, definitely not the right call for that situation. You've got to be guarding against the edges. You've got to be guarding against the end zone. And you got him one-on-one, Scotty Miller, who's in there for Antonio Brown of all things. So you talk about different people stepping up. And I love the way the Packers were running ball, running the ball in the second quarter. And then you come out of halftime right after that terrible sequence to end the half, and you have the Aaron Jones fumble, and it turns into another Bucks. Touchdown, that's essentially sort of a 28-point swing if you felt confident that Green Bay could have potentially scored touchdowns on those drives. I mean, Mike, that's huge. The Mike Pett decision not to give the safety in one and man coverage help, uh, that, that evoked memories of what Greg Williams uh, did to get fired for the Jets against the Raiders. Just a uh, lapse at the end of a, a half or at the end of a game that just cannot happen. It was too risky. A play call for that juncture, they got burned for it. And, you know... Now you what you mentioned it, and it was fourth and goal at the Tampa Bay eight yard line. It was 31 20 23. The Packers had a chance to score a touchdown, uh, convert the two point conversion, and get this game to 31 with two minutes to go. This is this is what I talk about when I say this is why I felt as a fan it was taken from us because that's drama. Aaron Rodgers on the field, fourth and goal at the eight with the game on the line, and and you trot out Mason Crosby for a 26-yard field goal. And Matt LaFleur, um, after the game, said he regrets it, but he didn't regret it because he thought he made the wrong decision. I think some people were parsing his words. He regretted that it didn't work out. And whenever something doesn't work out, I <laughs> regret it. But the truth of the matter is he did, and Greg, you tweeted the same thing I did right in the moment, which was in that moment, and, and this is why in this, when the stage is like this, and we saw it with Stefanski last week too, sometimes these coaches get tense you go with, I'm going to trust my defense with right. essentially four timeouts because uh, you got the two-minute warning uh, and then the three timeouts to get me the stop and get the ball back to score another touchdown over Aaron Rodgers on a fourth and goal spot. And that is you. That is very hard to wrap your head around. After the game, uh, Aaron Rodgers, as you might expect, was asked about 
Matt LaFleur's decision to pull the offense off the field and kick the field goal to get it to five points with two minutes to play. Aaron, did you agree with the decision to kick it there on fourth down? Well, I didn't have a decision on that one. Um, yeah, that wasn't my decision. But I understand the thinking above two minutes with uh, all of our timeouts. But, yeah, that wasn't my decision. That's as far as Rodgers can go without actually throwing his head coach under the bus. Yeah, it, it's an impossible question to answer. He he had another telling answer when they asked about the third down, though, too, which is that, you know, he thought he, he, he might have had a chance to get it in running, that maybe he should have run it, and that he thought he might have had, you know, four downs there. Now, you, you're mm-hmm. right about the, the moment, um, and I think LaFleur really erred in, in not going for it in the first half, too, where they were closer. And I don't think it was the moment that got to Aaron Rodgers, but he made two straight bad decisions on second and third down. I, I you know, I thought there was a play to be made on second down, which we kind of forget. And he ends up throwing it. He, he had a lane to run there. And I would love to see a different angle. They never really showed it to us. We'll be able to see it when Game Pass puts it up from the overhead view of like how much room he had in front of him to run on that down. Come on, Fox. We it, needed that angle. We never got it. It was a little, you know, it was a little indecisive on both of those plays where he didn't have anyone right around. I mean, he, he's a great player, it, but those are just two massive plays and an otherwise really good game out of him. And I think about Devonte Adams essentially dropping the touchdown on first down in the first half on the goal line. They were the best team in the NFL in goal to go situations. They were 24 for 25 <laughs> coming into this game. And, and, uh, and they had two situations in this one where they didn't get it done. So I, it, it, it bothers me that LaFleur did that. Um, but you have to put it on them, on the players too, not executing leading up to that. Well, and it's, it was three straight incompletions to Devonte Adams on that first drive that forced them to kick a field goal from the six. And I, I like watching some uh, another angle of that chance to run on third down. I, I really think that's important what what Aaron Rodgers said because in his mind, you'd have to imagine he viewed it as fourth down territory. And if anything, had he taken off, he could have gotten far enough where I think you'd have to change the idea to kick a field goal there. If it's, you know, from the two or something, maybe LaFleur goes in a different direction. Uh, it's just an un- incredibly unfortunate. I mean, listen to Aaron Rodgers, who is, he's going to tell you how he feels, even if he doesn't put it into words. I mean, I think the weight of the entire season um, just comes down to that moment. And it's been such a long journey. And this is someone who thought they'd be in the Super Bowl with an MVP, you know, season taking on Mahomes. And instead, a, a really bizarre coaching decision Changes everything for hundreds of people attached to that organization. Mm-hmm. To, be, to be fair, th- I think we should point out that Aaron Rodgers and the Packers offense, they're an offensive team, got the ball three times in the fourth quarter. Pettin's defense got them three interceptions. They went yep. three and out, three and out, field goal. And and so it was a lot. You know, it was like I, I'm not I don't think any one thing is to blame, but it's like they had their chances. I think it's the toughest loss of Aaron Rodgers' career. Well, you well, oh, maybe 14-12 with the same. Seahawks in the uh, NFC title game six or seven years ago. Um, that is one of the worst losses I've ever seen any team suffer through. And I know when you're 15-1, and one, you got beat by the Giants that year after in they this, won the Super in Bowl. The, in the first half of that game ended the exact same exactly. way. A Hail Mary to Hakeem Nix. Hakeem Nix, right. Uh, but I think there was something extra on this one that makes it hurt more. Um, the fact that he had all this drama around him, that he was coming off by his standards a down season or two, that the Jordan Love move happened, that they, he was kind of in the media crosshairs about his future. And then he comes out and he plays. It gives you know This is one of the best quarterback seasons you'll ever see. He's going to win MVP, get home field advantage, and now all you got to do um, is get past Tom Brady in your building to get to the Super Bowl and have the storybook ending. For that not to work out, for it to end the way it did, where there's the frustration of being pulled off the field and not getting back on the field. And this leads to, and we're going to get to the Bucks right after this, but I think this is important because this is what people are going to be talking about. After the game, uh, Rodgers uh, is now musing about the future and what comes next after the deep disappointment of Sunday. A lot of guys' futures that are, you know, uncertain, you know, myself included. Uh, that's what's sad about it most. Getting this far, 
obviously there's going to be an end to it at some point, whether we make it past this one or not. But just the uncertainty is, is tough and the finality of it all. And, Mark, I think he – if you ask me, there's no way he doesn't come back next year and people are reading too much into the emotions right after a game. But when he says that, you know, he, he doesn't know what happens next for him, it's because there is a first-round pick quarterback on the roster. So that throws in a little bit of mystery to all this. Um, your thoughts on Rodgers' mindset after the game? Yeah, because I think, number one, I mean, Rodgers in the summer um, was so refreshingly honest about the fact that, look, at no matter what – I achieved or have achieved when you've drafted a first round quarterback, they're going to want to see him at some point. So he already knew then that he may have a truncated finish with the Packers. But um, tonight, I think it's what you get from a lot of players when you suffer a grisly loss. It's like, I need time to think about this. I need time to think about um, the future. And he mentioned, you know, that there are a lot of players on that team with, um, I think, questionable futures. I mean, they have two pass rushers with a $38 million combined price tag cap hit next year. And I mean, you know, for me, it's like this is the worst Rodgers loss. And I those the Seattle one, I mean, you could say punch by punch, but we're we're guys, right? And so suddenly you think about where you were seven years ago and the worst thing that happened to you, but you're younger, you have time to get over it. Or that Giants loss when they were 15 and one, he had decades and eons to get over it and to come back. But now it's like you're getting up there in age, and who knows better than Aaron Rodgers how tough it is to get back to this point. I, yeah, I, th I I agree with everything both of you said. I do think he he is Aaron Rodgers, so I give him the credit that he he is in control enough, even when he's emotional, to have a point to that. Now, is the point you're right, Dan? Just he's kind of thrown out there. Look, hey, they put me in this situation. You never know if I'm going to be back, or is it I've got in the back of my mind I'm going to need something to be happy about coming back. I, I think either it could be possible. You know, he could look at it like, I don't want to go into next year as some, uh, in some situation where it's going to be like, I almost know it's going to be my last year unless I win the MVP here. Cause you're going to want to play love. So, Hey, maybe give me some more guaranteed money. Uh, I, it'd be hard to imagine him saying like, trade me. I see all these trade stuff <laughs> popping up and it, it, that seems a little premature, especially because, I got to imagine the Packers will do everything they possibly uh, can to make sure that he's not going anywhere. And David Bakhtiari is not going anywhere. He just signed a huge deal and plenty of other great Packers players that he loves playing with aren't going anywhere. But is there and a that, little bit of you that maybe if you're Aaron Rodgers, you're looking across the way at Tom Brady, who, you know, two years ago, no one have, would have thought that would happen. And maybe. you got a fresh start and you would get to, you're in control of your, I guess your legacy in a different way and not under the Packers umbrella. It I don't know. It feels different to me though, because I think one of the sins of the end of the Brady era in new England is that they didn't grasp the urgency and they left him on well, the just never. It never ended. <laughs> with this, they, like, they thought the end was four Super Bowls ago. Yeah. Right. But like by the end of the, it was an easy decision for Tom to leave because his offense around him was not good. He didn't have the weapons. He felt like he was not going to be able to get over the hump. I think green Bay has done an excellent job the mm -hmm. last two years with Matt LaFleur of building up an awesome ecosystem around Rogers and a great offense. And, you know, they got this far. They got, they, you know, had a chance to tie the game late in the fourth quarter of the NFC title game. I, how frustrating it must be to once again not be able to get over the hump. But like to, the idea of Tom Brady needing to go somewhere else to be better set up or better appreciated, I think there's still, I, right all, there. all I'm saying is like the idea that this is like 100% not a possibility. I mean, the NFL is evolving and changing and, and players have more say and power than ever before. And I think that there is a percentage chance that he's somewhere else next year based on who he is. And All right, give me the percentage. Give it to me. I'd give it as a 9% chance. <laughs> okay. On the, okay. 9%. And this, but by the way, that's with the information we have. That can grow and grow. I'm not saying it, it stays there. Right now it's at 9 On the Tampa Bay side, and let, let's give the Bucks their due now because what they were able to do as a wild card team here, rip through the NFC with three straight road wins, including this game, uh, again, and this kind of ties back to the Rodgers point, this Packers offense has been so awesome. Uh, just, just a buzzsaw that went through teams until they dealt with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and it was a, a, a theme earlier in the season as well. But in this game, Devin White, the superstar of last week's uh, win, 15 tackles and a fumble Oof. recovery. Shaq Barrett blows up in this game 
uh, with three sacks, two tackles for loss, four QB hits. Jason Pierre Paul, he also has multi, uh, he has two sacks, two tackles for loss, two QB hits. They did exactly what we talked about, um, Greg, entering this game where they needed this pass rush, which on paper is rock solid, uh, to then actually do it and and pile up the hurries and make Aaron Rodgers uncomfortable. And they did that. That was, I think, the key to the game, uh, the, the front seven performance by Tampa Bay. I, I agree with you. I think that was the difference because you look at that the money um, Green Bay's paying up front, they did not get enough pressure on Brady. And then you look at what Tampa Bay did. And I've been kind of getting on this pass rush for being more name than, than game for a lot of this year's Bucks fans. know they have not been the same since Vita Vea lost. And I know Vea didn't show up in the stat sheet, but I would watch them. They, they only brought them in on third down passing situations. And I, you know, I'm not like a coaching uh, offensive line guru, but he was getting push. And those were the plays that Barrett, um, was making plays. Those were the plays that JPP was making plays. So I don't know if that's all Vea or they all just sort of balled out. Um, but I know Mark was was having a tough time watching his boy, Billy Turner. You know, we were on Sky Sports. Neil asked us for an X Factor of the game. I don't know. Maybe X Factor could be like bad X Factor. And Mark goes like super um hipster football hipster tape dog guy and goes billy turner and then turner's just getting beat up all day by his billy old turn nemesis. style they call yeah. him yeah his old well, nemesis jack barrett oh and no, I, you know and as i mentioned <laughs> i like it was tj lang the former packers lineman who noted that that um turner had in the last playoff game basically gone into a three-point stance on every run play but a two point stance on every pass play. And it was kind of a tell. And I just wondered if maybe they would pick up on that. And I think it was just massive. It was also just JPP overpowering um, someone who's not David Bakhtiari. I think it's one of the biggest absences mm -hmm. in this game was Bakhtiari is not being there for them. Um, yeah, there wasn't much separating these two teams. I, I don't think it was those little goal line plays. It was the pass rush. What you didn't like look at, you didn't watch this, Dan, and think like, I don't know. The Packers didn't show up or something. What was it? 28-10, like it right? Yeah. And it felt over. And then yep. Green Bay goes right down the field, uh, gets the touchdown, and they get the uh, interception, I believe, and go back down the field again. And it felt like the momentum and the surge was there. Um, I, that's what surprised me the most. When they got that stop, finally, uh, especially the, the final Brady interception and you thought okay they're, now they're really setting up Aaron Rodgers to march down the field and take control and to Tampa Bay's credit they just didn't let it happen but I, it'll be hard you know my dad famously called Matt LaFleur the bearded boy and you know <laughs> winning in the ch championship conference championship weekend that's man's work I mean that that's when you need to have the onions and the belief in your team you have to learn from guys like Andy Reid if Andy Reid can trust Chad, Chad Henney with his season on the line, you need to trust Aaron Rodgers. That, that's what I'll remember um, mm. about this game and maybe this whole playoff run because the Packers team, while everyone else for the most part was in on the Bills, uh, I really like this idea of the Aaron Rodgers full-on revenge season that, that caps not just with the league MVP but going to the Super Bowl and really sticking it to his team for not showing faith in him by taking Jordan Love. And now that's out the window. Tom Brady instead goes back to the Super Bowl. A couple of crazy Tom Brady stats. His 10th Super Bowl appearance now for Brady. Uh, that's double the next closest guy, which was Elway. And uh, this, will be his oh. third, this will be his third Super Bowl appearance. This is all from the great people at NFL Media Research, Jeff Greenholtz's team. This will be Brady's third Super Bowl appearance uh, at age 40 or older. Only 11 other quarterbacks have made three Super Bowls in their entire careers. And uh, he has now made it in three of his four age 40 seasons and on a new team. And the extra nugget that I love, Greg, that I didn't even know was a thing until you brought it up on our TV show on Friday. There are Patriots fans that are smarting tonight. And beyond Bill Pelichek, who's dying right now. Uh, other Patriots fans upset that Tommy boy is doing it for somebody else. And then I thought about it some more. It's like, what if uh, Derek Jeter... Uh, went to the Dodgers and did this. I guess that would bother me a little bit. So I understand it. 
Uh, but it, I, I guess it depends on your rooting interest. And now we're like way down the rabbit hole here. But you have to accept then that there's, I think, even more Patriots fans. And I was, you know, texting many of them that are loving this and are, you know, living and dying with these bucks. Not, not like if it was the Pats, but are enjoying the hell out of this ride because sounds like a bandwagon, by the way. But well, Patriots of course, fans are used it's to not that. like you're buying. It's not like it's not the same. But like, why would you not enjoy watching? this great player who gave you so much can joy I, do something like can that. I offer can I right. offer a reason why right because and you're right we don't need to go down the rabbit hole yes. too much but because Mark Brady has now right offered now. definitive proof uh that the Patriots if they just would have done better housekeeping inside their building could have had him for another few years and continued as a Super Bowl contender sure but they could have like, they ran they, like, they hit the wall money wise I mean right. it's well, sort you of run your team yeah, better, like, you could you could run the team better draft better spend your money better and maybe you could have gotten another three or four years of Tom Brady instead <laughs> you say goodbye and he goes to the Super Bowl with somebody else it's, well, I but think it's the relationships like, need to end at some point. And like this, this is a, this idea that Brady, that Belichick is steaming behind the scenes. He's dying. There's literally no proof to this he's at dying. all. This, no. is a, this is a but talk radio topic. This yeah, imagine no imagine if the Jets that. gave you six Super Bowls <laughs> like in the last 20 years. Like you would feel so sad as that, that you would be grateful to this person. And, it, and you just like football too. I mean, that's part of it. Obviously, I'm attached to Brady, but you love watching. I love watching history. And yeah, he did not play. You know, people are like, oh, Brady's getting a little too much credit again. And it's like, I get it. He he threw three interceptions in this game, like in two, two were pretty much on him. One, one, not so much. Um, the last one, I'm not going to kill him for. But like, he also made some great reads. You know, he had some gems in this game. He he knew exactly like where to go, when to go. He, his arm looks amazing. And he's the one you know, who got them here. And it's, it's just remarkable. I don't know. It's, amazing it's story. remarkable. It's remarkable. I mean, like you were talking, like he's, he's won as many NFC championships as Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees have. I mean, it's not <laughs> easy to do. It's not easy to do. Right. Do you guys I mean, want to hear from Brady before we move on? Please. To all go on the road and win a, you know, another road playoff game. Is it just a great achievement? And, uh, you know, now home Super Bowl for the first time in NFL history, I think, puts a lot of cool things in perspective. Anytime you're the first time doing something, uh, it's usually a pretty good thing. So now we just got to go, uh, you know, have a great two weeks, prepare for whoever it is and, you know, be ready to go. And he looks better than all of us too, Mark. Here's the thing though. If you're I, the field goals can be the thing everyone talks about forever. Two of those Brady interceptions, the Packers took the ball and went a combined negative five yards off six plays. Mm -hmm. you, you got six points off of three, Brady interceptions. If you knew coming into this game that he was going to throw those three passes, I would have predicted a, a Packers route. Right. And I, I would have predicted if the Packers get eight points there at the end. Yes, we get the classic game, Dan, but I would have predicted Tyler Johnson uh, catching some crazy pass on the sideline to set up uh, Ryan suck up for a game winning field goal. And that's, you know, probably how it would have sure. ended. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't doubt it. I, after all these years, I don't doubt it at all. Mark, come on, Belichick's dying. I, I simply, I like, I know that you at this point, you're clinging to anything you can. <laughs> I don't know why. Energy, but this isn't, a, like, I find that to be utterly absurd. Why is it, it you know, it's the funny part that, that all you Belichick soldiers out there don't even entertain it as a possibility. Just no, I entertain it as a possibility. I, 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 like, I let Wes answer the question for me. I entertained it, you know. It's, it's like, is he that small of a person? I think it's the people mostly covering Belichick that veer towards the smallness. I mean, Belichick is competitive. He probably hates seeing like, he doesn't want to be tagged as like the reason the Patriots failed this season, but I mean, they achieve more right, together you, than any coach and player. Give me a break. You allow me this then. I don't know. Late? I mean, I, he, I have no what? say in it. Of course I'll allow it. You, you just do whatever you want. So say it. Will you, <laughs> I got him worked up. Will you allow me this then Mark, that he might think, man, I, I wish, I wish I would have, handled the end of this a little better because obviously this guy could have taken me to the big game. They more. won the Super Bowl two years ago. I mean, I don't know how much better you handled the end. Like right. it needed to come to a close. It just did. That's didn't all. Have to. What is it they not? couldn't even what pay Brady that? what he should have been yeah, paid. Why did it have to end? What, what does that mean? Because either? they couldn't That's... even pay Brady what they needed to with their cap situation. Like, I just it, think it like. I, look maybe at, I could have spent better. Maybe I could have drafted better. It didn't have to be. I didn't have to be watching. 
Yeah, but so, you don't spend that money, then some of those Super Bowl wins, which were all so close, don't become right, reality. Right. So, so it's he's, like, he's made four out of the yeah. last six, by the way. It, it did have to. At some point, you know, not okay. enough is enough, but like you can be satisfied with what, what you got. <laughs> right. I, I am. They don't need to win anymore. Right. The, the, the defense he, rests. You guys, but, you guys got it. Good job. You'll get your paycheck crazy. in the mail. You mentioned since age 40, if you back it up to 37, he's made, you know, four out of six Super Bowls. That's just crazy. That's just crazy. Like we, we, Someone tweeted us at this. Could you now, could you now divide his career into thirds and they're all Hall of Fame <laughs> careers? I mean, just since thirty-five, he's yeah. kind of had a Hall of Fame career. Now it's uh, crazy. That is, I mean, if yes. you want to, I think the the divide the career in half. Half is good. That's and amazing. they're both Hall of Fame. That to me is what makes him the goat because I love that perspective. Divide it by thirds. That's a wild thought. Now we're getting into I mean, it. Kurt Warner's in his last third is is there with Kurt Warner's maybe. I don't I know. I mean, Tony Romo said today, he said that Patrick Holmes is a, a, a Hall of exactly. Famer if he retired today. So maybe uh, the idea of breaking his career into seven year chunks, he could do. I don't know. Brady's done that three times at least. So I no part problem. Give him a third Hall of Fame right. entry. So it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who come out of the NFC. Who will they face in Tampa? In Tampa, the Bucks in Tampa. Now, COVID makes it weird, of course, because you're not going to have a full house. Good job mm. by the NFL. It's going to be some healthcare uh, workers, 7,500, in fact, in the stands at Raymond James Stadium uh, for the Super Bowl. For the first time in NFL history, the team in the Super Bowl is playing in their own building. That's pretty will, wild. Like one little West note. I mean, if there has been one field – that Wes and I in unified fashion have ripped on this show forever <laughs> because of it. No, we want to deal with the daytime sunlight. It's fine the, at night. It's fine at night. I know, but I'm just saying it's hilarious to me that this is the field where this is occurring, but um, I'm sure it will look um, gallant in, in the evening. Well, I guess when you think about it, it's on the East coast, obviously. So six eighteen kickoff, uh, it, the sun will be down by then. So that will help us. Yep. Now you can't do anything about the, the goofy pirate ship. Well, or the yeah. or the uniform matchup, which we'll get to, but I would just find that to be an absurdity. So there are some there are some lingering issues. Maybe you could just drop a big tarp on that dopey pirate ship, and then we can <laughs> get about playing some championship football. All right, there we go. Let's. Sorry, Bucks fans, enjoy the moment. You deserve it. It's been a long time. Um, all right, let's get to the AFC. I'm gonna throw a slant, caught 35 yard line, juke move, Tyree kill, 45, 50 yard line, touch it back, look out, 40, 35, 30, Cheetah at full speed, 10 to the five yard line. You play impress, the Cheetah will run you all the way around the earth. It's a 71 yard pass play to the Cheetah on a quick slant. Mitch Holtis, who said Cheetah about 47 times there during that call, WDAF. Yes, it didn't go for a touchdown, but that 70-yard gain by Tyree Kell felt like the dividing point where the Chiefs had completely taken over and were heading back to the Super Bowl. And that's exactly what they ended up doing uh, with a 38-24 win over the Buffalo Bills at Arrowhead Stadium. And, Mark, the Bills, I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better start. They go down the field, they kick a field goal. Then you have a huge uh, special teams gaffe. Uh, by McCole Hardman that sets up a, a quick touchdown. You miss the PAT, and it turns out that that missed PAT was kind of the beginning of the end because a lot of things started going wrong for the Bills from that point onward. Yeah, and we've we've learned that um, early point advantages over Kansas City in the playoffs um, mean next to nothing, but it was a gift and a, and a fortunate start for Buffalo. And it's, I guess, you know, one of the shames of this weekend is that both games – to me, have really similar um, unnerving issues by the losing team because I, I find myself almost equally annoyed that Buffalo kicked a field goal from the Kansas City 2 um, and then on the following drive kicked a field goal from the Kansas City 8 um, when it was so um, crystal clear to every human being watching it, including our children who are, um, you know, they're, they've just learned basic human skills at this point that you are dealing with a team that is essentially unstoppable, that has two unstoppable players, not even named Patrick Mahomes, that they were struggling to even vaguely contain. You have got to put every ounce of aggression into these opportunities when you get into the red zone. And I thought they just played it way too safe. It, it just, it's, to me, that was it. It's like the Chiefs, we know what the Chiefs are. They're so dominant that they've become normalized and we, Take them for granted. I'm like watching Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill do things that I've never watched a 
you know, a combo of two players on an offense ever do. And I'm just like, I find myself, and this is the fault of me, almost exhausted and bored with them because it's like watching, um, like growing up, I'd go to the video arcade and I hated video games, but I'd watch like my one friend kick butt on the video on like some sort of like 1980s game. It's like, I guess I'm drawing pleasure out of seeing him be great. Um, I mean, the fighter, maybe. I don't know what it was. That was a ridiculous yeah. tangent, but it's like, Free if you're fire. the bills, you've got to storm that house and take it over. And I thought they played real cautious. It, it, hmm. it stunned me. Well, I think it's a defensive coach, not quite believing that the defense that his executive of the year, buddy, Brandon Bean and, and him have built up for four years. Weren't going to get stops. You know, he could, he wasn't going to believe it. You know, they didn't get any stops. The Chiefs, the Chiefs, Mahomes says it's only been stopped once in, in these two playoff games while he's on the field. And that was on the first drive of this game when Pat, when Tyreek Hill dropped what might have been the best pass Mahomes made the whole day. Like an absolutely ridiculous, would have been a 45 yarder um, that he went back shoulder on. And and that was it. They weren't going to get any stops. I, I'm with you. They they played it too safe. But in this, in this game, I don't think it would have mattered because I don't think this game. Um, was close like the other where you couldn't separate them. There, there was a big separation. One team couldn't throw the ball consistently and the other team had Mahomes. One cl- one team was clearly better. It was the Chiefs. And I'm not going to say they rope-a-doped us all uh, because I think all of us that follow this team closely and follow our league closely always thought there was a chance that the Chiefs would know when to turn it on because they're that special. They're like those uh, mid-90s Michael Jordan Bulls teams where sometimes it would feel like they were doing just enough uh, to win, and then when they really needed to step up, all of a sudden there's vintage MJ, MJ, and you know Dennis Rodman is diving into the stands for a loose ball, and Scottie Pippen is just filling up the box score, and it's like, oh, they were always this team; uh, they were just in hibernation. <laughs> That's what it felt like watching this game. But like to Mark's point, I love Sean McDermott; he's done such a great job there. I, I have him maybe in my top two for coach of the year um, if you're putting together that that list, and yet. It felt like he didn't know the team he was up against. I just didn't understand that. I feel like there should never be a game when you're against the Chiefs, especially in the playoffs, uh, when you have, as Mark said, a 20-yard field goal late in this first half and a 27-yard field goal Mm. uh, edging toward the end of the third quarter. You have Josh Allen. That's that's the thing. You have Josh Josh Allen, Allen. and and you have a defense that you're proud of, and they just played really well the week before against Baltimore, but it's a whole different ball game against the Chiefs, especially when you have no idea how to cover Travis Kelsey every time you need a third down stop. You needed to score, score, score. So not to grasp that basic thing. I know you, it, it's easy for bozos like us to oversimplify it, but sometimes like the simple explanation is the right one, which was the Bills played the game like they had a defense that could stop the Chiefs, but they don't because nobody really does, at least not on this stage. Hmm. Yeah, and I think like, you know, it was a game where Stefan Diggs had like, 12 yards at half or something and 28 deep in the game. And they just never, this wasn't the, this wasn't the pristine bills offense that we've um, been used to. And you're right. You're right. And it's, it's, I guess that's, you know, they, these losses, they give you a lot to think about as your team building and thinking about next season. But Emmanuel Akko, I thought had this incredible um, stat here that Patrick Mahomes will play in two Super Bowls before ever losing an NFL game by more than one possession. (laughs) <laughs> that's that's just stupid i mean he's <laughs> he's the greatest that's i i um you don't want to be a prisoner of the moment but i i don't feel like i am because i've i said it like five games into his career like i like i get it there's accomplishments and people try to do all this parsing aaron Rodgers is the most skilled player but uh, you know you know tom brady's the goat because he's the most accomplished like i okay i get all that they just mahomes is just like the best at at playing quarterback that I've seen. He's only played, you know, he's only played three years, but he's the, he's the best total package. And I think that, and that makes sense because players generally get better. So the new generations guys are are probably going to be better than the ones before. But the, the difference this year is his mind, which has always been good, but now they really are. They really are so patient where you mentioned that Kelsey just racking up those seven yard, 10 yard throws. I think that's the thing is Mahomes, like Rodgers was this year, that's how he won his MVP, just took what they were giving him and then 
he'll have that drive where you get a free couple free rushers. You get a little cute if you're Leslie Frazier and actually send something at him. You get a couple free rushers at him, and he just calmly like gets out of the way and makes a couple ridiculous throws, and then he just beats you a different way. He's just I don't know. He's the best I've seen. I think it's the best three year run for a quarterback since Favre, 95, 96, 97, when he was just out of his mind winning MVPs, winning Super Bowls. I actually have um, a good tweet here from the undefeated. Since 2018, Mahomes has 43 wins, 131 touchdown passes, almost 16,000 passing yards. He's been an all pro three times. Uh, he's won the league MVP. He's won the Super Bowl MVP. He's won a Super Bowl championship, and now he's been to the Super Bowl two of the last three years. And, oh, by the way, the one year he didn't go was that great AFC title game against uh, the Patriots where he just went bonkers and did everything he could and didn't get a chance to get on the field in overtime. Otherwise, he would have been in the Super Bowl all three years. This is heady stuff. It is. I, I mean, one thing I'd be concerned about heading into the Super Bowl just to monitor that I thought that Eric Fisher injury at the end – those yeah. are the little things that like we don't really think about like uh, coming out of the game. But, I mean, we just talked about what happened to the Packers with their left tackle, their star left tackle out of the lineup. It's just something to work to monitor because they were already down. So their tackle situation was already a hot mess. But you kind of look at the Chiefs and it's like, I guess that will matter. But the way that, Greg, you mentioned that um, Patrick Mahomes is evading what would be crushing sacks in a playoff game for another quarterback weren't. And they – you know, frankly, it's like we go, we don't talk about their defense a whole lot, but Tyron Matthew made an incredible play in this game, like heat seeking Allen and force him into an intentional grounding. I mean, two weeks in a row, Honey Badger has been playing out of his mind. And, you know, some of their pass rushing that they that they use to really create a tough, I think, situation and environment for Josh Allen threw him off his game pretty early. Yeah, I think their defense has played their best two games maybe of the year, considering the opponents, considering they played two top five or six offenses, the, you know, the bills, you know, as good an offense as they played all year. I mean, Romo was on it. They were good in man coverage. Spagnolo sent a lot of heat, you know, more than anyone this weekend. Uh, he was the most aggressive, you know, Bowles really wasn't after they lost their safety. They, it wasn't the typical bucks attack and they Buck got both, right? They, they got to him a lot. And that's sort of what I mean about the difference. Maybe right now between Mahomes and Josh Allen is you think about, there was a, a segment late third quarter to the fourth where, where they did finally get heat on Allen. He, he makes uh, some mistakes. He, you know, his four sacks took 53 yards up. Um, whereas you saw Mahomes seeing exactly where the blitz was going to come, changing the play like he's Rogers or Brady, except he's only 26 years old, getting it protected up and taking the easy play. Whereas I don't think Allen, you know, and you wouldn't expect it is quite there in his third year. And they heated him up pretty good. They averaged under five yards per pass play for the second straight week. So that's like Gabbert zone stuff The the, the pass game for the bills. And they're kind of an all pass team. Uh, kind of hit a brick wall these last two weeks. Yeah, it's it's I would, you know, you try to make sense of teams entering the playoffs and the Bills when they were just going off on teams and running teams out of the building in December. They felt like they were peaking at the right time, but it turned out they did peak at the end of the regular season, and they were they needed Josh Allen and the Bills offense needed to deliver, you know, their masterpiece to get to the Super Bowl as it turns out. And they, they just couldn't do it. And, and part of the reason why is because, and Romo said it well on the telecast, th the only way to beat the chiefs is Travis Kelsey or Tyree kill. One of those guys can beat you and, and you could survive it. But if they both are sticking it to you in the same game, your chances of winning are almost nil. And I just did a quick, the quick math here. Uh, Hill and Kelsey combined for 22 catches on 26 targets for 290 yards and two touchdowns. No, I mean, it's crazy. And they did. They did. Man. I think it was, over, it was over 200 last week. And you know, I, 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 we, I think we all feel for the Bills fans because they're a special fan base. I, you know, I, I, it's a ugly Sunday. But I had a couple of them being like, "Oh, I get what you were saying last week. That like, even though I, the Chiefs are totally fun to watch, and I love Tony Romo. Tony Romo um, gushing over Travis Kelsey when he's frying your team and ending your season is not a lot of fun for the viewer. So it's like. Look at, like, I mean, we all enjoy the Chiefs until you're dealing with the Chiefs with your favorite team. And then it's like, this is ugly. This doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I would think that. it's not like the Bills came out of this game thinking we're right there 
you know, we're, we're going to get them next year. You come out of this game thinking, oh, man, this are, are, is this going to be, you know, to use the Bulls as an analogy, but going back to the 80s, is this is going to be the Detroit Pistons for us where we're just going to get our ass kicked for a few years? Are we ever going to get over the hump? Uh, because it felt like the Chiefs were just a far better team um, and a team that's just not going away anytime soon. It's bad news for everybody in the AFC, uh, right. including our team Mark, and everybody uh, else. Or are we the Knicks and the Chiefs are the Bulls? And unless oh, Patrick Mahomes takes thing. a year off to go play minor league baseball, not it. totally a stretch, you know? Now they you're were, on they it. Weren't we close. Are, yeah, they, they weren't close, hope, today, but they were close this year. They were you close. Hope, you hope you're the uh, Bulls in the 80s getting past the Pistons. You worry deep down that you're the 90s Knicks that never get over the Jordan Bulls. You worry about that. It is so hard. I mean, we don't even need to get there because they're not even they they got to go win the Super Bowl first. But man, it is hard. You know, we've seen how hard it is to keep winning. They weren't close today. I I think they they had reason to come into this game with plenty of confidence, not just because they were the number one team and weighted DVOA, but you know, it's like what more can you do uh, in the in the eighteen games leading up to this than than what they did? I guess their defense could have been a little more consistent uh, throughout the course of the season. They did not. They did not show up today. And and maybe you're right. The the maybe the Chiefs just have this championship mentality. But it is crazy that this is the game where they finally won by two scores. It's like <laughs> nope, it wasn't the Falcon. Like it could have been three scores. This was like they dominated the Bills more as much or more than you know the Falcons or the Dolphins or the Panthers or any of these teams that they played down the stretch. They they just put it on them. It's funny that and the Chiefs, of course, they they went to the Super Bowl. Um, very early on, what were they in Super Bowl four or something? I can't remember exactly. They were in a couple, right? They were yeah, in they won the Super Bowl 69. Four. They won the four, year right? after the Jets, and then they didn't go all those years, 50 years until last year. Now they're in twice back to back years. And Andy Reid last year, it was all kind of it was the fun, feel good story of Andy Reid finally. Um, getting over the hump and winning that Super Bowl and enjoying the perks of that and being uh, the love affair between Chiefs fans and Reed. Um, he, now it, it almost felt just normalized hearing Andy Reed celebrating again on a riser. Let's listen in. I still, he's still a guy I love, uh, I love him. rooting for. He's just a good dude and a yep. great coach. I mean, he's a great coach. I think he's also a lesson for if you're, if you're smarting tonight over a uh, boy with a beard or, or Sean McDermott and some of their decisions, Andy Reed lost a bunch of, a bunch of NFC title games early on. And Andy Reed was dog, like had Twitter been Twitter way back when, I mean, Andy Reed and his time, you know, like two minute warning time decisions would have been driving people nuts. I mean, he's grown and evolved and suddenly you get Patrick Mahomes and you're like, oh, Bill Belichick, I know what it's like to have like one of the greatest <laughs> quarterbacks running the show with me now. Twitter Twitter was around for like the end of that Eagles run and you're right. I mean, they you know, and I was, I'm sure part of it, killing him for some of the, the clock management and the, in the two minutes. It's great. Like the Bills, you know, we didn't mention like they stole a possession in the first half with the punt return. They stole a possession with the onside kick and they, and they stole a possession because they finished out the first half. When the chiefs got the ball back right at the end, it had been 10 possessions to seven. Like the, the bills had somehow stolen three possessions and they were still down two touchdowns. I mean, that is as big a, that's, it's just outrageous. I don't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> and they needed a Stefan Diggs to have a monster game. We talked about Bill Barnwell, um, the idea that somebody else had to step up. Was it finally the ja the John Smoke Brown show? Nah, again, John Brown uh, was quiet. Cole, Cole Beasley did his Cole Beasley stuff, and the running game just wasn't there. It never really was all season, but the only running they got was from Josh Allen, who had 88 yards of the ground. So Bills fans, obviously bitter disappointment whenever you can get this far and then get turned back, uh, but you're still feeling very good about the future and and Chiefs fans. This is just like this is the magical time right now. If you're a Chiefs fan, you know it. You you waited, you earned it because you were on the pain rankings. You knew what it was like uh, to suffer for decades, to get closed, to get turned away, to have middling teams, to have to root for Tyler Thigpen on Sundays. And now you have, you know, maybe Greg was right all those years ago. Maybe you have truly the one at quarterback, and this is just the beginning of what's going to be a long run. Back-to-back -back Super Bowls, pretty wild stuff. And I, I, I don't know about you guys. Um, I like the chances 
of Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs going back to back. I think it's going to be a great game, and we're going to be digging into that over two weeks. But right off the bat, what are your initial uh, thoughts about this matchup? Bucks Chiefs. I'm I'm torn because it's like I kind of want to root for the Bucks as a Brady, but just picking against Mahomes at this point, and I love watching him feel silly. I I think the Bucks have a real chance, and I do think Eric Fisher um, having that Achilles injury, and when they announce Achilles and Reed's over there talking, you know you can Not a good sign. you can yeah uh, assume the worst and hope to be to be pleasantly surprised. You know that that helps. I think that gives that gives the buck. I mean, they're on backup tackles at both spot. That gives the bucks a chance. I do think the bucks are more complete um, than any other team in this playoff field, in, you know, including the chiefs. I think they can win different types of ways. They had a great day returning the ball today. So I, I give them a pretty good chance. I, I'm with you. And I think that you've got a coach in Bruce Arians, who's uh, his DNA is aggressive. Um, Tom Brady's DNA is aggressive. And so you're not going to probably run into these same, scenarios that younger coaches I, I think fell for today and and, and got in, in their own way and um that's not gonna be the case there and I mean honestly you look at the Bucks and the way they're built and say well had they lost today maybe next year is their Super Bowl year because almost everyone is coming back I mean there's no reason to think they couldn't be just as dangerous they won this game without Antonio Brown um I I'm just uh I, I think it's going to be a great one and I, for me mm. it's because I simply refuse to doubt Tom Brady's um, ability to be there in the fourth quarter. I, I the Chiefs though are they may be superhuman. I they're only three and a half point favorites. It does feel like maybe that um, feels absurd to me. A little what I like to call a, the thread the needle game. You know the Chiefs win, but the the Bucks you know end up keeping it even closer than that. A little internal housekeeping. Who had who uh, with the locks for this game? Uh, the uh, the back to back. Well, you know the Chiefs are still hoping to get back to back titles, but I got mine. It's over. I, oh, uh, you had the Chiefs. I, I, I took up the, Chiefs. the Bills, and you know, congratulations. I, you know how congratulations. This, uh, yes, wonderful job, Greg. And like, uh, you, honestly, I don't know if we've had the locks come down to records that were as. I, you know, this may be the best lo- lock record anyone's won with. I'm not sure because it's it was tight. But um, I would have picked Green Bay otherwise. So even after the first game, I thought, well. The lock thing is house money if they win because I already would have, with my my inner feelings, picked the completely wrong team. So I did it twice. And if it if it makes you feel better, Mark, uh, as the as the runner up, um, the locks will be back next year. So Greg, even well, though no, he can make a power play, two, two it, straight it means you can. Well, then you need to get like rules written down. You know, there <laughs> you know ne- things need to be changed. Greg, not that was the rule. You were just not going to do it. You get straight and you get get it out of here. Let's I know, but Greg is like thinking of like of 80s Lakers dynasty type things. No, yeah, I wrote, wrote it down right here. I wrote it down. Got to win five what? straight. You got to win five straight. <laughs> well, that's true. No, there's no, you know, because I understand the the number one factor is is luck. The odds on three straight, it's not going to happen. So it's like, that's why I want to, you know, you got to end it right now. You got to end it. Okay, well. It's not going to happen, but uh, congratulations. That that was a very, really strong performance, and I thought you were a little a little conservative with your picks you, in, in the postseason, but how can you ultimately quibble when you you got the lead and you closed it out by getting behind a bunch of heavy favorites and you took the title? Oh, I would have done the same thing. Greg. Oh, please. It was the playoffs. <laughs> what, I took the Chiefs today. Yeah, what a big, what a big heavy favorite. Give me a break. <laughs> Good stuff. Anything else? Anybody else have anything to download out of their um, virtual notebooks or physical notebooks before we Mm -hmm. turn our attention toward the dark week? And it is different. First of all, this is the first Super Bowl ever that will feature the previous two Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. So that's cool. Mahomes, Brady. Um, As as Mm -hmm. we talked about, this is the first Super Bowl that will – be in held in the stadium of one of the participants i assume it's gonna be the first super bowl that's not going to be sold out but i guess it will be capacity but it won't be a filled uh the building won't be filled and it is sadly the first super bowl uh in since we started in this podcast that we will not be there uh, but the the coverage will continue unabated here from los angeles i'd feel much worse if they sent everyone but not us like we're not there because right. no one's there. So you know, the part of me that would be concerned about the dynamics there, I, I think Colleen's it. going. You know, could they send in a couple of the big, the big well, shots? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Even know that. She's going. She's going during the week. Fish. I don't know if she's going for the the game, but she's going for the week. 
Well, that does tell you that at least they view at least one um, media individual inside our building is more important than us. Uh, <laughs> so already I'm sort of annoyed. <laughs> it couldn't, couldn't happen. All right. Good. And, and uh, Erica Tamposi, you are wearing a Tampa Bay Buccaneers jersey. Tom Brady, was that a gift or something? Because you, you yeah. haven't actually been rooting for him. Yeah. No, I'm, I was rooting for him just because the Pats weren't in. And I don't like Aaron Rodgers. So I was going to root for Brady even if the Pats weren't in. Are you with yeah. me on this thing with the Belichick thing? The Belichick oh, is pissed off? I think he's upset for sure. Okay. I was having this conversation today. A lot of people were like, how could you root for Brady? Like, even if I won 4,000 Super Bowls and he left for another team and took them to the Super Bowl, I'd be like, F you. And I do feel like that. But also, like, I'm sick of all this Aaron Rodgers, the best quarterback. Oh, please. <laughs> Go home. <laughs> oh, that's it. where he's going. Wait, so, do you guys, so you guys you guys think that, you know, despite any any proof, you just it's in your minds that Bill Belichick, like, kicked his shoe through the TV screen today, that that's how he handled this? No, he probably took his cute little husky dog Nike for a walk and kind of grumbled about how, like, <clears throat> the one that got away. Yeah, it's upsetting. I, I mean, I, I, I enjoyed this much more than like seeing Mahomes, be, you know, beat some Patriots team 45 to 17 in the wild card round, which would have happened. So uh, this this was fun watching watching Brady do this. All right. Good stuff. We will be back on Tuesday uh, to dig into the start of the ramp up towards Chiefs Bucks. I'm with you, Mark. I'm not feeling this uniform matchup too much oh, red beyond beyond not feeling it like um i'm yeah. i'm feeling the first time i'm feeling jealous that greg is you don't know what color you don't know which colors what if the bucks wear the home whites well no there no the movement has already begun because damashek i put it at the at the height of of this these type of movements the uniform movements he is urging the bucks to go despite being the home team to be wearing white jerseys because you got to spend the next 40 years looking at these highlights Mm -hmm. How about we veer away from anything looking like an eyesore and do not go pewter tops and bottoms, please. I mean, there's just, there's a, it's a thorny um, scenario with them in this game on that front alone. At least the Bucks got rid of those terrible alarm clock uniforms. Well, it? yes, you're right. It could have been worse. You're right. In minor, this, are you minor saying this could be a tough one for the colorblind because of all the, the red? Yeah. And I'm the, saying I'm wishing I were colorblind this one time. It's a nice thing to be able to see colors, but this one time, if they, if the they go to see colors, it's just like the, the, the shades are a little off the green, well, whatever it is you're dealing with. You're very shady about explaining what, what together. how you're impaired on that front. But, um, you know, and, and Packers fans, please spare me about saying this is why we belong atop the pain rankings. Can we please no, don't, don't stick the needle in? It is, it is brutal. They have had a pretty, it you is twist crazy. the knife or am I giving them drugs? Like what? Don't I mean, maybe, maybe the Tuesday show for that. If that they topic. made it this far, they're already, you know, masochistic. But um, just don't tweet me about it. I've get, I was getting some tweets about it today. That's all I'm saying. That's fair. I mean, they it's it That's is an amazing 25 years. I don't care what you say. I get it, but it is crazy that decade. So I I was at that um Packers Super Bowl, which was in Tampa. So they were trying to return to Tampa. It's crazy in the decade since, and Rodgers will have won three MVPs in that decade since. And the all the good teams they had that they have not been back. That's yeah, crazy. bitterly disappointed for Aaron Rodgers. You know, he wanted to put the mm. exclamation would point. Have been, it would have been good on this season, but uh, you know, maybe in his age thirty eight season, he will get it done. All right, that's it. Dan Hans is signing off for Quiet Storm, the old boss, Ricky Tamposi. Congratulations to both the Super Bowl participants. We got one game left. Hell Tuesday.